Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Digital Plus Summit online session. Today, we have Sandrine, president of Baozun Brand Management. She will be talking to you guys today about consumer centricity in action. So I'm just going to leave the floor to Sandrine. Please take it away. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for joining. And uh, yes, let's get started. We have about half an hour. Um, and then after this, I will leave you uh, about 10 minutes for uh, questions and answers. So yes, indeed, my name is uh, Sandrine Derbib. I'm president of uh, Baozun Brand Management and Baozun Europe. Baozun is a Chinese group focused on e-commerce operations and generally speaking, focused on digital operations uh, for brands. Uh, I actually sold my company, Fulljet, which was actually focused also on e-commerce operations and digital operations for, for brands to Baozun two years ago. Meanwhile, I wrote a book, which is called Dragon Tactics, uh, about how Chinese uh, entrepreneurs have developed some skills which are very specific for um, managing uh, in under uncertain uh, environments. And previously, um, I was the president of Adidas Greater China, which I started the business of until um, the, the Olympic Games in uh, 2008. So as we said, we're going to talk about consumer centricity in action. In action means we're going to see what it means practically in the life of the company, in the actions of the company, of a brand company, so that uh, you have uh, as many tips as possible as a takeaway from this, uh, from this session. So since we're going to talk about consumer centricity, let's just uh, spend a few minutes to remind ourselves who are today's new consumers in, uh, in China. In fact, uh, we're going to talk mainly about uh, Gen Z consumers because they have huge influence on the consumer space um, in, uh, in China. As you know, the Gen Z or what we call the Gen Z are people born between 95, 1995 and 2009. Now, their purchasing power has kept increasing in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, even more. And they have actually, as I was saying, shaped uh, the new uh, consumer landscape. And they are what most of brands would typically target as a segment, even though they sell to other segments as well. One of the reasons is that not only they have a huge influence, but they represent a very significant share of the household spend with 13%. And just as a point of comparison in the US, it's only 4% for the same generation. <clears throat> so what do they care about? They value more and more individuality and self-expression, which we will see uh, goes into uh, very demanding consumers when it comes to personalization and personalized experience. They are cultural enthusiasts, which in practice means they are very nationalistic and they want to see their Chinese culture expressed properly uh, in the brands uh, they like. Um, they are very keen about um, aesthetic preferences. They like style. They like things that they consider to be uh, very good looking and very attached to this, uh, much more than some other uh, consumers. They um, are trends, some of them are trendsetters, but the mass of them are trend followers. And actually, it's a, it's a country where uh, we will see, and we have, and for those who work in China, you have seen how much they follow trends and how much a brand can be super successful in a very short time and then go down very uh, shortly, just the same. Um, they enjoy social sharing, uh, like, of course, their generation in general, but this infuses their way of purchasing products a lot more. They are obviously digital natives. So with all this, what kind of challenges uh, are we faced with as brands, uh, given this type of uh, consumers? First, this, uh, these consumers, of course, uh, represent a certain diversity and they require a very deep understanding uh, of their unique preferences, even though they are not all the same. Second, they change very uh, swiftly uh, their views on, on things, on brands, on what they like and what they dislike. So 
we need to really capture any micro trends to uh, not be left behind. There is also very intense competition to um, attract them, uh, particularly between local brands, which are more and more successful and foreign brands. And obviously balancing online and offline for these digital natives um, is a very important move for long-term development. So these are really the challenges we are faced with. And here we're gonna really look at, with a lot of example, how practically we address these, uh, these challenges. And a lot of examples, as you'll see, come from local brands, not exclusively, but a lot of example come from local brands because over time they have actually uh, shown the way uh, to please these consumers and they are to some extent better at it than uh, foreign brands. So to tackle these challenges, I have organized things about, around three big themes. Number one, it's about placing consumers at the heart of the product creation cycle. The second one is about entertaining consumers with content marketing and live streaming. Entertainment and entertainment in relation to uh, consumption is extremely important worldwide, but 10 times more in China. And then finally, giving consumers a seamless experience, I would say a seamless, unique experience, thanks to social commerce and omnichannel. So let's get started. Number one, placing uh, the consumer at the heart of the product creation cycle. In the past, we most of the brand companies used to be very product centric. So they would actually start R&D, sourcing, production, and then go to sales and finally meet the, the consumer. That except for a few uh, market research activities, this is really the way it was conducted. Uh, on top of this, the production was very um, inflexible and it was difficult to adapt. I think today, and this is really an area where Chinese brands excel and do much better than foreign brands, consumers are at the absolute center of the product creation cycle, thanks notably uh, to the digitalization of each stage of the product creation cycle. So from the very beginning, we actually collect data from consumers before we even start thinking about a range or a product. And then all along, we keep uh, consulting consumers. Quite often, some uh, the, the local brands would actually organize small production lots, test them online before they go to bulk, which means that they would be able to make some adjustments. That obviously requires to have production next, next to you, uh, which also means for a lot of foreign brands uh, onshoring and a very flexible uh, supply chain very responsive supply chain. And all along the process, through all the touch points we have with consumers, we can keep adjusting and keep going on and on and on, uh, gathering data and adjusting the entire production cycle with a lot of reactivity. Now, here is, a, is an example of a local brand, Urban Revival, which is a kind of super Zara, if you will, in China which uh, responds to consumer needs with very good products uh, in a very, very short time. So they obviously prioritize individual uh, preferences through a very well-developed data-driven approach powered by a lot of technologies that they have either acquired or developed in-house. And they have obviously also a very flexible supply chain. So th this uh, requires strong data uh, analysis capabilities, usually powered by uh, artificial intelligence and offering uh, pre-sales and sales analysis for very swift trend tracking, which in directly influence um, the, uh, the entire cycle. Then the idea is also to use technology to be um, very innovative uh, and flexible uh, in the product creation cycle. Technologies like uh, 3D pattern making, image recognition, machine learning, so that you know we can be much faster and much more accurate in responding to trends instead of being more impressionistic. Obviously, very agile supply chain and also a very tight relationship thanks to technology with uh, the suppliers so that they can also uh, adapt to, to the needs. 
Here, let me take an example, which is in Baozun Group. So Baozun has acquired the operations of GAP in uh, Greater China. And the first thing we've done was really to focus on strategic localization for the GAP products, uh, turning digital capabilities, turning the digital capabilities of Baozun into the ability to localize, localize our design and uh, have a very, very efficient supply chain. And this has actually proven um, very, uh, to be uh, very effective in even six months from the, the time we have um, acquired the operations of, uh, of GAP in uh, Greater China. Now, let's turn to the second block of action that I mentioned, which is really the importance of entertaining consumers with content marketing and live streaming at all times. So content marketing is, ev is really everything about keeping consumers entertained. There is a huge need for entertainment and for engagement through different touch points, metaverse, mini games, user generated content, short videos, and so on and so forth. Uh, this uh, need is actually across the board with, uh, across the world, I should say, uh, with every consumers from this generation. Nevertheless, it's pushed uh, much further in the case of, uh, of China. Uh, and we have a lot, a lot to learn uh, from this because they are very good at it. Here, um, uh, it's obviously expressed through uh, live streaming as well. Live streaming has become um, a key way of selling products online with uh, and uh, represent a very important um, uh, important uh, portion of the online sales. And again, live streaming would include um, a lot of uh, uh, mini games, uh, reality shows and so on and so forth. He, you can see a few examples of very busy uh, screens, which are typical of this uh, entertainment uh, thing. Starting with uh, Xia Hongshu, the red, where you have a, a famous actress called Dong Jie, uh, and uh, showing and showing uh, particularly some fashion, local fashion brands. It's interesting because she's very different from the first uh, uh, generation of uh, hosts and KOLs who were more like selling machines. Here she's more personal. Uh, you see also Florazis, uh, which is a, a local cosmetic brand. Uh, you see how uh, games um, are are being used, as well as um, way I mean, games also to 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 dress yourself and try different clothes even across different brands, which is quite interesting. On the left uh, bottom corner, you see how uh, we use some uh, uh, TV stars in Hong Kong to to continue this uh, and so on and so forth. So you see, it's very lively. The screens are super busy. Um, so content uh, has become really super important for all the e-commerce platforms. Uh, and what is interesting is that today we're not fighting as much as before for the a, a share of the budget of consumers, but really a share of their time. So anything we can do to attract their attention and get them spend more time on either your platform, if you are a platform, on your brand, if you are a brand, is going to be essential. Now, here is an ex interesting example, which is uh, uh, Night Taobao. So actually Taobao, which is part of the Alibaba group, has noticed that people are very busy in the daytime. And, and therefore in the daytime, they, they tend to purchase more in the traditional way. In the daytime, um, they, they would actually make a search in the search bar, uh, which is what you are most familiar with. Versus at night where they have more time, they start really going into this new mode of consumption, which is really buying on the go uh, with a lot of impulse buying. And therefore, it, th then there is a, an increasing need during that moment to entertain them uh, every, every second. So uh, there is a special program. You can go into that special program by, by actually pressing this button, which is Night Taobao. During reach, you have a lot of games, a lot of activities online. And all of them link to uh, go go to links with or sh are shoppable. I would say activities. There is always a button to buy something in a game, um, in, in a video, uh, or a beat, whatever it is. It can be a pair of shoes. It can be a snack that 
uh, at night, actually, they have noticed that people like to have snacks. So that is typically what, what happens. <clears throat> so um, here, if I, I will try to, to show um, a, a few videos to you, uh, which are interesting because, um, as I said, the in order to entertain pe people, you need not only images, but you need videos. And you need these videos to be uh, increasingly uh, entertaining, even though the way of entertaining may, uh, can be very different. So the first one, for instance, um, it, these are all videos uh, produced by Balzon actually, is for uh, uh, Canada oh. Goose. And uh, it shows, it's really theme-based uh, outfit, outfit. So you see Canada Goose in, in context. Um, I'm gonna pass so that we, we don't spend too much time. Um, I think the the second one, oh, I don't know how, yeah, the second one is Puma. Uh, again, trying to be as uh, creative and and uh, a bit quirky, if you will, uh, in order to attract people. Okay, then something you may be more familiar with, which is the traditional. It's not so traditional, in fact. Unboxing when you receive uh, something, and this is uh, not only videoed and shared in uh, in communities, but it's also used by brands uh, quite a bit. So here is uh, about receiving a Kate Spade bag and showing the bag during the unboxing process. The next one is uh, from uh, Jordan uh, and shows um, actually an outfit guide. And the last one is really uh, about product details. So I, I gave you this uh, panel, I would say, of videos to show you that the, the content of the video can be extremely varied depending on the needs but in any event it attracts people and it keeps them stuck to their screen actually this is the role also of, of videos now <clears throat> more and more we need to push creativity in this content in order to as i said you know keep the attention of consumers and get a, a larger share of their uh, of their of their time and not just of their wallets. So um, I'm, you, you're going to have here an example, for instance, of a, a Nike video, which is really like a reality sh uh, show kind of style. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe you cannot hear, but the girls are talking um, in, in a camping type of set. Um, and um, they're just talking about the products, how they use the product and so on and so on and so forth. The second one, which I find really fascinating because I haven't seen this in any other country, is the one-on-one -on -one, uh, live streaming. So this is something used by, uh, particularly by obviously luxury brand. So a consumer, especially a VIP cons uh, consumer would typically register in order to, uh, and with a time, a specific time and a specific needs. I want to see bags or I want to see shoulder bags. And uh, we would do a one-on-one -on -one just for this person uh, live streaming, showing this person what he or she wants uh, when she's still in her sofa uh, at home. So here we see that uh, with all these uh, new ways of, uh, of shopping, it's really the, the store coming to the consumers. So it's very lively. It's like a store, but it's not Consumers going to the store is the store going to the consumers. Uh, and, and the last two are, are Nike and show actually a very creative way of mixing uh, re reality and virtual uh, reality. Uh, same with the last one, in fact. You see, the, there is a, the, the same person is either a real person or an avatar wearing the same clothes. So it's, it's entertaining. Um, with with all this, in order to produce all this and to be more and more accurate uh, in what we do with um, uh, with uh, this uh, creative uh, 
content, uh, we we need to push it to the maximum, and and therefore we use more and more artificial intelligence to generate the contents. Typically, we uh, we would actually use algorithm to uh, synthesize a, a lot of visuals um, from what is being read on the product information sheet and then create uh, automatically some copywriting and some images and some videos. And I'm going to show you uh, two examples of this. <clears throat> of uh, AI generated content, which is more and more used uh, in the digital scene and e-commerce in China. Uh, okay, and a completely different style, but equally generated by artificial intelligence. So as you can see, some of them can be more or less creative, but uh, what is also very important is that this enables mass creation. Uh, if you have to, uh, to, to, to address the demand for videos, um, you will never have enough. You will never have enough, and that's why more and more we use these kind of technologies to really be able to uh, produce mass videos uh, and a lot of footage footage for, uh, for the needs on e-commerce and social commerce platforms. Uh, here it's even AI generated live shopping, where I think I can also show you a little bit. So uh, part of the the host, actually the host initially is a, is a real person, but once we have captured her mimics and her gestures, uh, we can produce a lot of uh, live shopping uh, by artificial intelligence, obviously against the background, which is also produced by artificial intelligence. Here you've got uh, also some uh, live shopping of... Uh, uh, in, uh, produced by uh, artificial intelligence, where actually you can put the products uh, and, and also interactive because the consumer can put the products, enhance the products they want to see in this middle part. So um, this gives you an idea of how we entertain consumers in China uh, through a lot of uh, videos, live streaming, and the need for a, a huge quantity of it uh, that can be addressed by, by certain technologies. Now, um, let's go to the third type of, uh, of, of action that uh, I have mentioned in the beginning, which is the fact of giving consumers a seamless experience between social commerce and uh, omnichannel. So let's first look at the social commerce and the fact that um, in China particularly, much less so in the Western world, but it's progressively coming, the lines are completely blurred between e-commerce and social platform. Basically, on e-commerce platforms, be it Taobao, Timo, Jindong, Pinduoduo, you've got a lot of social elements, which means that um, you can uh, gather a community, uh, have short videos, live streaming, uh, game, and, and share with your friends all these elements. You can message inside uh, your friends and um, inside this e-commerce platform. But reversely, the social platform like WeChat, Doing Red, or Kuaishou are more and more into selling products. So using these uh, initial communities and uh, social capabilities to actually engage into uh, e-commerce functions, which is completely developed uh, right now in, in, Ch in China, it's a little bit less developed in the rest of the world. So typically, for instance, if you take the example of Doing, which is TikTok in the rest of the world. TikTok is obviously a humongous success in uh, everywhere, but in terms of uh, e-commerce function, it's limited to uh, the US and, and the UK for the time being. 
here is a, a, the example of a mixed um, a, a journey that combines on the red, which is Chou, combines the experience of social commerce and, uh, and, and simply commerce. So typically after work, the consumer is going to say, oh, what's new today? I haven't, uh, I haven't opened my red yet. Um, then, you know, be attracted, let's say, by a bracelet. And because this person is attracted, this consumer is attracted by this bracelet, he or she will scroll down, take a look, and then uh, click randomly on, on, on some posts and finally see more and more messages and see if it's popular. This is really about community and, and sharing. Then go into the detail of the product, share with the let's say with his or her best friend, well, usually it's women, especially on the red. So I'm going to stop saying he, he or her, let's say he or she, pardon. Um, and, and then maybe at the end, the friend has said, oh, yes, it's great. And she will buy it. And everything is done within the social commerce uh, platform, which is initially a, a pure uh, social platform and has developed these capabilities with, in a slim, seamless way, you never need to go out, not even for payments. And that actually has created uh, an experience, which we can see here in the case of a Perfect Diary, uh, which is another example. Perfect Diary is, uh, a, is a, local, a Chinese local cosmetic brand. It has created um, a, a network type of um, touch points. So your touch points with your consumers are never linear. It's always um, a network. So you can actually look at this diagram and somehow you can start from any possible point uh, in this diagram. You can start by, um, the consumer can start by going and subscribing on the official accounts uh, of Perfect Diary on WeChat or simply go in a shop and in the shop be encouraged to um, to to, to uh, scan a, a QR code in order to be able to um, to be part of a group. And then this group will be animated uh, by actually um, artificial intelligence with a lot of subgroups and uh, personalization based on the persona of the consumer who has uh, scanned the QR code. And then uh, will be addressed uh, messages um, and also um, inviting uh, fans to, to, to join the group and finally uh, making them able to purchase still on WeChat. In a way, uh, this seamless experience also um, needs to be not only on the digital uh, landscape, but between online and offline. So I think this is something you're slightly more familiar with, but which is way more uh, extended uh, in China than what you have seen. I mean, here it's an example with uh, with Uniqlo. Uniqlo, that's part of this uh, in the West as well, but I would say that they do it more in China and that in China, most of the brands do it. It's a must basically, which is really uh, having a, a totally seamless uh, experience between online and offline. What you can do online, you can do offline, or you can finish offline what you started online and vice versa. So you can actually uh, buy something or reserve something online, try it and pick it up offline, exchange it offline, um, or uh, reversely, you can be in a store, scan, some, uh, scan a QR code and decide to receive at home what you have seen in the store. And then um, with this, you've got a, a lot of geolocalization, for instance, uh, showing you know exactly where the, the, the closest store with this product uh, is located uh, so that it's, it's really easy. And you can receive, well, if you go in the store first and then buy it to receive it at home, you can receive it in a few hours, in a matter of hours. So, um, this is actually the three big things I wanted to uh, to show you in terms of how to put in practice um, your consumer centricity through your product creation cycle, through the way you entertain uh, your consumer online through all the touch points with live streaming and content marketing, and uh, via a very seamless experience between uh, online and offline and between social 
and e-commerce uh, platforms. Uh, just a, a few words. Uh, I mentioned earlier that um, Baozun is a digital commerce partner for lead leading global brands. So just a few words about what we do at Baozun. So we are the, uh, the first uh, e-commerce operator in China offering a one-stop solution uh, empowered by technology and one-stop solution, including everything from uh, IT, customer service, logistics, uh, operation, store operation, et cetera. Um, and we are listing on the uh, NASDAQ as well as the uh, uh, in Hong Kong. We recently created Baozun Brand Management, which uh, has a different activity. It's not about service. It's really about engaging in uh, holistic brand management for a selected portfolio of uh, premium lifestyle brands, uh, where again, we use our market insights to and our technologies uh, to give Chinese consumers uh, what they need and to really work on a China for China approach. Uh, for now, uh, we just started this new activity at the beginning of the year. So for now we have in portfolio Gap and Hunter. Okay. 